Coming up in this series of Next Level Adventures. For the next few weeks, I'll be road tripping around the beautiful island of Borneo. Borneo, baby! <laughs> I'll be renting a cheap scooter and exploring the Malaysian province of Sabah and trying my best to share with you everything that this magical place has to offer. Oh! And it only grows in Borneo and in Malaysia. So relax and subscribe if you're new and let's enjoy this series together. back on the road guys. I have no idea what flavours these are, but it's a mixture of yumminess. <laughs> this is where I landed yesterday and where I've just been getting my bearings. And the beginning and the end point for our adventures in Borneo. This is the main airport just across the way. There's a mall. There's a bunch of fancy hotels here as well and some delicious seafood, which we will try. I thought I'd start with dessert. <laughs> I had a bit of a rough start as well, actually, when I landed. Firstly, I flew with Air Asia and my flight was delayed by three hours. So I missed my connecting flight in Kuala Lumpur. Luckily, they moved me onto the next flight to Kota Kinabalu, which was only 20 minutes later. So that was really good. But then when I arrived in Kota Kinabalu, my backpack never arrived. So for the first day, I had no luggage, but I went to the airport this morning and they had my bag. So a bit of a rough start to the trip and it's been raining all day today. So I just wrote today off and thought, you know what? Let's go get our bag. Let's get our bearings. Let's try some ice cream. We'll have some seafood at the night market tonight. And then we'll get out of here because we're here to explore the incredible and mysterious island of Borneo. The locals here seem really friendly. Everyone I've met so far, big smiles, very friendly, good level of English here. And even though this area of Borneo is very wild and we'll explore and we'll go on a big motorcycle tour, and I'll show you my motorcycle in a minute, I'm really happy that the locals seem really friendly. Because that was one thing I was worried about coming here. I didn't really know what to expect. Obviously, Borneo is the fourth largest island in the world. And, you know, it's cut in half. Most of it is Indonesia. The northern part is Malaysia and there's also Brunei. But we're just gonna be exploring in this series, the northern province of Sabah, which is part of Malaysia. A very proud nation here. Everywhere you see the Malaysian flags on everyone's car, on everyone's house, on every street. Even the grab delivery drivers repping the flags. But they also seem to have a very uh, proud connection to their province because their provincial state flag is everywhere. I even bought one at the airport and I put it on my motorcycle, which again, I'll show you that tomorrow morning. Yeah, friendly locals, quite a few things to see and do, although it was all rained off for me today. Um, and, and lovely, lovely local people. So I just wanted to give you a little bearings of where we are and what we're doing. I found the chocolate ice cream right down at the bottom. Now we're talking. <laughs> There's quite this simple map here of Sabah province the tip or the northern part of Borneo itself and this is a great way to sort of show you and outline what my plan is over the next two or three weeks. So I've rented a bicycle here, a motorcycle here, Kota Kinabalu. This is where we landed, this is where we are right now and tomorrow we'll head up to the tip of Borneo, some nice beaches and uh, you know it's always nice to visit the tip, you know, just the tip. Then you have uh, Kinabalu National Park, home to Mount Kinabalu. Not only the tallest mountain in Borneo, but the tallest mountain in Malaysia. 
and we may or may not be doing something very special there at the end of the series. We'll come along to this area here. I think there's lots of wildlife. You can see they've painted pygmy elephants. There's Borneo monkeys, very special to this island. You've got orangutans, wild as well as uh, in salvations. And maybe we'll see them. We'll see that, we'll see how it develops. And then there's also some beautiful marine parks with some islands. So basically in a nutshell, we'll do a loop up to the tip. We'll go see some animals. We'll try to discover the unique nature and what, you know, is the reason Borneo is so famous around the world. And then we'll just, we'll get lost and we'll just go on these random road trips and maybe we'll go diving and snorkeling in these beautiful islands. The whole of the tip of Borneo is our playground in this series and uh, I can't wait. <laughs> Right, let me show you my bike and also where I've been staying because it's quite cool actually and I recommend that you stay here. This is the Signal Poshtel, which is a fancy version of a, of a hostel basically. There are dorm rooms upstairs and a communal kitchen, but I'm staying in a private room, very clean, very modern. Yeah, not too badly priced as you can see below. This little street here, no traffic, just the odd little motorbike coming through and the smell of durian because over here is a durian shop where it's actually quite quiet, but it's been so busy all day. Lots of Chinese tourists, lots of Japanese tourists sitting there ordering durian and enjoying it. And uh, there's a little cocktail bar here with live music, which is quite nice, right opposite the hotel. And then there's a really nice high in these chicken, like Kaumungai chicken shop. And um, delicious food there, I had lunch there this morning. And I'm uh, gonna meet a subscriber for breakfast there tomorrow before we head off. So I'll introduce you to him later in the video. Right, do you wanna see the bike? Now, don't get too excited <laughs> because it's not, it's not, epic or anything. The selection in Borneo and in this city was very limited, not very, not very many places that rent bikes and not of a very good selection to be honest. So I just went for this. This is a Honda Vario 125cc scooter. Now very not interesting, it's just a Honda Click basically, just different, different name here in Malaysia. 150cc, sorry not 125 and it's got F1 technology and it's red and black. It comes with a back box, which is quite handy. Keep your helmet in here and other bits and bobs. And I will tape the uh, Sabah flag to it later, maybe tomorrow before I leave. And you know, she's red and we're in Borneo. And so I just thought we'd call her Brittany after the uh, red outfit that you see her in that famous Oops, I Did It Again video. I don't know, I'm getting Brittany vibes. Beautiful Brittany in Borneo. Here's a nice alliteration there. Anyway. Let's go to the night market and get some seafood and enjoy some more of the sights of this small city before the real adventure starts to happen. Right, welcome to the night market here in Koto Kinabalo and uh, it's the seafood night market. I'll leave it in the description for you. Five minute walk from the hotel. Live music. Lots of things for the kids to do and lots of seafood for us to try. Now I did pop my head in here last night, but um, it wasn't as busy as it is today. Jeez, everyone seems to be having a feast. This is definitely the kind of place that you want to come with a family or a group of you. Yeah, the seafood night market here on the waterfront in Kota Kinabalu is certainly an attack on the senses. The live music, lots of people enjoying their dinner, kids running around playing and screaming their heads off, and lots of delicious fresh catch seafood all around you. I couldn't actually get my head around the massive selection. You will be spoilt for choice. Every type of fish, lots of seashells and snails, Big and small, we saw the huge ones a second ago. And yeah, just walk around. Each store has a slightly different variation of selection. So walk around, have a look at each store, and then pick your favorite place. Be careful when you come in the kitchen. You won't leave with any eyebrows. <laughs> How are you? Wanna try this one, sir? Maybe barbecue with sambal, banana leaves. <laughs> Barbecue with banana leaf. Uh, barbecue with banana leaf. And is yeah. that spicy? I like spicy. Uh, yeah. Which fish in particular? Maybe uh, grouper or red snapper. 
Yeah. Or maybe parrotfish, Tyson. I, I tried a parrotfish before. I, I didn't think it tastes very good because they eat coral, right? Yeah. You need to eat fish that eat fish. Oh, maybe this one. Red snapper. She eat fish and prawn. All right. Do you have right. a smaller one? A smaller one, smaller one. Maybe this one. Same also. Red snapper. All right, let me have a look. Fresh one too. Can I see his eyes? Yeah. Okay. Good. Any catch today? Yeah. Morning. In the morning? Yeah. Try the price first, including cook the price first. Can you give me a good price on uh, a selection? Yeah. I would like to try maybe... A fish, a fish, and maybe three other traditional style oh. Malaysian things. <laughs> maybe small, uh, just okay. Some it. squid. That's good. Think, uh, try. It. Give me basket first. Okay. And which one? Um, you like some prawn? How much is the little lobster? We sell 25. I give you 18 ringgit for 100 gram. 18 ringgit for 100 gram. Yeah, for one kilo, just 180. All right, I'll try. Can you? How do? How can we prepare this one? Maybe uh, try. Uh, do, you, do you like spicy? Yeah, go on. Uh, try kamyo. Kamyo, tastes good. All right, lobster kamyo. Kamyo. We got the, the we got the squid. We got the fish. The lobster thing is uh, 400 gram. 18. <laughs> we'll do it for free then. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the snails. You see these guys? I, this is a bit too extreme for me. This one is, tastes good, like some abalone. But, tastes uh, like what? Tastes like abalone. I can't eat a snail that big. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to stomach it. What's this green stuff? Uh, seaweed. Okay. Can I can I try a little bit of that? Yeah. Just, what do you do? Uh, do you deep fry that or? No, just eat raw. Eat raw. Eat raw. We, okay, we, I'll try a little piece of that. Yeah. Maybe three ringgit like this. No, no, no. I mean, I, I'm, I'm talking like a mouthful. This one good. <laughs> oh, maybe just half, half, half. Maybe this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because half. because we don't eat seaweed like that where uh, I come from. Just and I want to try a new things. Just try this one. He grabbed like a massive bunch. I was like, whoa, dude. And the uh, price on. Can you wait? What are, what are these? Uh, scallop. Scallop, that's what I was trying to say on camera. Scallops are really, really lovely. Oh, that's yeah, a lot. Okay, that's a lot. You. How much is that? Is that is that 300 gram or is that 100 gram? Maybe. Yeah, 300 gram. So this is everything that we're going to have. Wow, I mean, this is way too much, but you know. We've got a lobster. lobster. What type of lobster is this? Uh, rock lobster. Rock lobster. Okay. Tastes good. Yeah, okay. And then we've got the scallops, we've got the red, red snapper, snapper, we've got the, um, the baby, squid baby squid and the scallops. Is there something else I'm missing? Oh, and the seaweed is in there somewhere. And the seaweed is <laughs> Yeah, put some seaweed in there for good luck. <laughs> Maybe more. Okay, okay. okay. Alright, what's your name? Uh, my name is, uh, just call me Matt. Matt. Because everyone here call me Matt. Okay, the food has started to come out. And I still think we're waiting on the lobster. And something else I can't remember. <laughs> okay, here comes the lobster. Thank you so much, my love. Wow, have a look at this. Oh, it smells so good. Okay, we'll let that stew over here. Okay, I think we should begin with the scallops. Wow. Kind of in this gravy sauce with some spring onion. A little bit of chili in there. Oh yeah. This is the spicy squid. Looks amazing. Some onions and more garlic. And lots of chili in here. Oh! I'm gonna have to... I'm gonna have to cut that with some rice because it is ooh, spicy. Okay. 
Okay, so here's the red snapper, which they cooked in banana leaf. Oh, it smells very sweet. Mmm. The sauce on the top, it's like a curry sauce, like, it, like you would find in an Indian restaurant. But the flavor's not of a curry, it's just the texture. It tastes more like it's made from a fruit. It's got that plummy sweetness to it. And just by squeezing that calamansi lime on top, just gives it that little zest. Okay, let's try the rock lobster, the final dish. Not quite sure where to start. I'm gonna have to put this one down. So the lobster tail just came out really easily with my fork. Just pulled it out of its shell. I've never seen lobster prepared like this in any restaurant that I've ever worked in or eaten in. It, it, it smells like like condensed milk or something. Anyway, down the hatch. I'm gonna ask him again what, what sauce we went for. Can you, can you ask him? I'm gonna ask him, what, what, what is it? Cause it it's, it's almost like sweet milk, but it, it tastes a lot better than how it sounds. What, what, what sauce is this again? The, the uh, lobster, do you remember? Butter garlic. Butter garlic, okay, okay, I couldn't remember. Tastes great. It's a butter garlic. So lots of butter. <laughs> I'm glad we chose this though because we've got a varied selection. This gravy sauce with just a little bit of chili. Then you've got the real spicy squid, which I absolutely love. And then you've got the fish covered in curry sauce. So we'll finish the lobster half and then we'll get onto the final dish, which is the, the raw seaweed. <laughs> Right, we're only gonna try one piece of this. It does come with a spicy dip. Um, but I, I've got a very strong feeling that I won't like this, but we'll give it a try. Raw seaweed. So I was enjoying that until the very end. So the initial texture and flavor is the stalk that holds these little bubbles. It tastes like morning glory. It's got a nice crunch to it and it's delicious. And then when the bubbles pop in your mouth, it's quite pleasant. And the spicy dipping sauce sets your mouth on fire. And so on paper, everything was going fine until the last five seconds as I was chewing it and it was about to go down the hatchet, I just got this big hit of salt water, seawater, obviously seaweed, obviously it's raw. But I, I thought I had escaped that salt water taste and it just reminded me of when you go surfing and you get hit by a wave and you swallow loads of seawater and it makes you want to throw up. Um, which is a shame because apart from that, everything else was really nice. Um, but we tried it, we tried it. And I've got the pleasure to sit here and finish this absolutely delicious seafood banquet, sadly on my own. <laughs> Everyone's just having dinner with their wife or their partner and their friends. And I just got here. I'm really looking forward to this trip. But it really properly begins tomorrow. Okie dokie. It's time to leave Kota Kinabalu. It's time to get this road trip started. And I'm, uh, I'm excited. I'm a little bit nervous but I'm mainly excited, so let's go. <laughs> okay, Brittany, let's do this bitch. Okay, the road trip. The Borneo motorcycle road trip has officially begun. As we leave the beautiful little area here, 
of Kota Kinabalu and the safety of the city with the supplies, reliable hotels and great food, we head north. Today our goal is to reach the tip of Borneo. Hello. Hello. And we'll see what adventures lie in wait. There's some activities, there's some cultural things. I've just realised my helmet's not done up. I'm a bit rusty guys, I haven't <laughs> driven on a motorcycle for a while. I still have Dreamy. People ask me all the time, where's Dreamy, how's Dreamy? Dreamy's great, she's in Bangkok. She's enjoying her early retirement. Although we might get her out of retirement later. Maybe next year. I had breakfast this morning with a local, a subscriber who reached out to me on Instagram. And I do get questions quite often like, you know, why don't I show the local people or when I meet local people and stuff. It's, it's just a bit awkward for me. I don't really like putting people on the spot, putting people on camera. Um, and Robert, the man, the man I met this morning, gave me lots of advice about the road trip and the destinations. Told me of some places that I didn't even know about, which was great, so hopefully that'll be on the list. And yeah, it's just nice to be on the road, guys. It's just nice to be setting sails for this direction. I know roughly I need to go east and north, and that's pretty much it. I love these adventures where we have a rough plan, we have a motorcycle, we have a playground, in this case, Northern Borneo. And yeah, damn did this feel good. Wind in my face, the open road before me, and the general direction of north being the only motivation for today. It's been a while on this channel since we've had a trip like this, and to have two wheels once again, and damn does it feel good. And yeah, we've got a lot of distance to cover. Will we make it to the tip of Borneo? And what will we find when we get there? Well, all of that, We'll have to wait until next time.